Hey, I'm Shay Mitchell of Timber Biscuit Woodworks, and this is my garage workshop. The space is about 20 by 22 feet or 440 square foot, kind of a homogenous workspace. I'm definitely still upgrading and moving things around in the shop. I'll tell you about what I like, what I don't like, what I'd change, and where I think things are going moving forward. So let's go ahead and get started over here at the table saw. This is my saw stop PCS. It is a three horsepower model. It's got a 36 inch fence on it. I upgraded this from a Delta about March of last year and I've been super happy with it. It has tons of power. It's way more accurate. It's way more of a solid machine. Our one huge factor that really made me fall in love with this saw is the fence. Um, you know, it locks down. It's a very sturdy design. It doesn't move at all. One thing I had an issue with on my other fence was whenever I would lock it down, it would wiggle a little bit or I would lean one way or the other by about 16th of an inch. These fences are notorious for locking down and staying where they are, which is a huge plus when you're trying to get that mark right on the line. So yeah, I mean, I can't say enough good things about saw stop. Obviously, you know that it's got the triggering feature that if your finger or if it comes in contact with any body part, it retracts. I'm sure you've seen the tons of tons of videos on that on YouTube. And you know, thankfully, I've never had mine go off and hopefully we'll keep it that way. The other thing that I've added to this saw is this rip flip fence stop from Woodpecker's Tools. What it does is it allows me to lock in a position for the fence and then come back to that position uh, over and over again if I need to move the fence. That's super helpful for, you know, batching out parts and then coming back to a part. If I make a mistake on something and I need to come back and fix it, I can come back to that spot without having to leave my fence in that spot all the time. So yeah, I mean, that's really about it. I, I love this saw, I highly recommend it. One thing that I do keep around the saw is I keep my push stick um, in a couple of blocks as well as a digital miter gauge or digital level gauge. The, those things work pretty well. Um, I tend to use that actually more than I use any of the squares or anything in the shop. I also keep two of my sleds right under here. One's for dados, one's for cross cuts. Both of them work really well for you know my purposes. I just like having the sleds nice and easy to grab. I also have another one over here, which we made recently on the channel. I keep one of these push sticks over here just in case I need to apply some sideways pressure on the work piece. You know, having all these things around nice and handy, nice and quick to grab is super important for my workflow. All right, so next we're gonna move over to the planer. Um, over here is where I keep most of the stuff when I'm not using it. Uh, it does weigh a ton, so put it on a nice sturdy stand. This is the DeWalt 735. Uh, I don't have the helical head in it or anything fancy like that yet, but I'm hoping to do that you know, shortly this year or maybe next year. I've had super great results with it. I got it for Father's Day last year. Been super happy with the finish it's given me. It's also got two different speed rates, or feed rates, excuse me, which has been awesome because sometimes you can plan things really quickly quickly, sometimes playing them really slowly and get that fine finish. Usually I don't have to sand too much off of the one finish on this. One great thing about these planers is that they have reversible blades. So if you get dull on one side, you can flip them over and you know, you have a second uh, edge that's very sharp. I just changed mine out about a week ago. So hopefully we'll have great results for another couple months and we'll flip them back over when we're ready to go to the next side. I've had people tell me that their blades don't last very long as they've only used them for one project. I've been very fortunate in that mine have been fine and I've had really good results from my DeWalt blades. So your mileage may vary. All right, so moving on from there, we have my open-ended drum sander. It's the Grizzly uh, G0458Z. Um, it's a 18 inch model, I believe. It's got a single drum. It works fairly well for most of my purposes. Honestly, it's not my favorite machine in the shop. There's no way to really attach an in-feed table or an out-feed table on this machine because it goes up and down with the wheel here. So the table has to move and that's kind of something I didn't think about when I first bought it. In hindsight, I would probably not have gotten this model because of that specifically. I like to be able to support my work pieces going in and out. So I have to set up roller stands if it's something that's a big work piece. If I'm standing like smaller work pieces or smaller pieces, it really makes quick work of it. So it saves me a lot of time in the shop sanding, which, you know, isn't my favorite thing to do. So I'm, I, I kind of deal with some of those things. I do think that I'll probably be moving on from this model, if not this year, definitely next year. So we'll see. All right, so over in the corner, I store most of my larger sheet goods. I've got some large three quarter inch plywood over here, as well as uh, these foam pieces that I use to cut out larger sheet goods on the bench when I'm using the track saw. I also keep my dust collection for sanding over here, which is this nice fancy bucket and one of these cyclones stuck to it. My dust collection needs some upgrades. Definitely something I'm wanting to do this year. I kind of talked to you guys about that already. 
in the community side. So hopefully this year we'll get some better dust collection. This is what I use for most of the dust collection in the shop. It's a uh, 15 gallon barrel that I got off Amazon that I stuck one of these cyclones to. It's connected to a rigid, I think that's a 10 gallon shop vac. So again, not the greatest solution in the world. Hopefully this year I'll be upgrading that to get an actual dust collection system put in the shop. Right now they're obviously very expensive, so we're getting there. Over here I got my joiner. Uh, this is an eight inch parallelogram joiner by Grizzly. I really love this joiner. It's got the helical head. Uh, so any of the blades that are in here, you know, if they chip or if they need to be replaced or easy enough to turn. I used to have a joiner where I used to have to actually set the blades. Luckily with this one, you know, they're, they're very quick and easy if I need to, um, which I have had happen a few times where, you know, a, a small blade is chipped and I just need to turn it 90 degrees and I can move on and keep working, which is really helpful not to have to stop in the shop. I get really good results from this joiner. It does have the rabbiting ledge as well. You can adjust it to, you know, 45 or any other degrees, obviously with the fence but I don't ever really do that. I honestly just keep it at 90 and once I have it set there, I, I don't have to worry about really doing much with it until I come time to check it every month or two. So dust collection has been pretty good on it. My dust collection does actually keep up with it pretty well. You know, your mileage again may vary depending on what your setup is and how long your hoses are. So for the joiner, I really like using these paddles. I think these are floats for flooring. They really grab onto the workpiece a ton better than the ones that come with it. Those aren't really grippy or sticky and these tend to hold Hold on a lot better plus they're about twice the size so these are like eight bucks at the big box store so go ahead and check them out uh, they're a huge asset in the shop over here i keep uh just kind of the stuff that i need to grab quickly in the shop like brooms um any extensions for the dust collection in case i want to sweep up I guess a little workmate portable bench thing and I don't really ever use it. I used to keep, actually, I shouldn't say that. I use it every once in a while when I need to put like something out in the middle of the shop and I don't have a table around for it or the bench is filled up with stuff and I really need to grab something. But honestly, it just gets tucked away. Um, this is the roller stand that I was talking about with the drum sander. I use that for like longer pieces on the table saw or on the drum sander. It also has helped out when I'm resawing things over at the band saw. So I've had really good results with this one. I know that people complain about the weight or about there's moving a lot in the shop. I haven't had really any major issues. If I figure out what kind of brand it is, I'll let you guys know and put a link in the description. All right, so moving on over here, I've got the drill press. This is the Ryobi drill press. It's just the bench drill press, nothing too fancy. For what I do, it works really well. I definitely have some issues with the weight of it not staying on the table, but I really could probably solve that by bolting it down. I'm just kind of not wanting to commit to having it in one single place yet because I do drill out larger pieces and I have to move it around. So it is belt driven, which is nice because then I can change speed rates if I need to. For me in this small shop, I think it works out well because it's not taking up any floor space built into my bench. Well, I also have this little belt sander and disc sander. This is actually a Harbor Freight Special. It does fine for what I need it to do definitely wouldn't recommend it as the best belt sander in the world you know you get what you pay for and i'm pretty happy with what i paid for it. i think it was like 70 bucks at harbor freight so can't complain too much about it underneath here i store my domino and any domino uh pieces i need for using the domino joiner i also have some track adapters some router bits um, an extra router dowels that kind of thing most of my stuff that i use for joining goes under here but um, anyway, so this is the air compressor. Um, I have a small little air compressor. I really don't use it very often. I use it more to blow things off of me than I do anything else. And it works great for that. Um, I also use it occasionally for brad nails, that type of thing, but little air compressor, I think that's it's fine for me in my workshop. Over here, I've got clamps. Uh, I had these wire racks that were already in the garage when I started the workshop and I just haven't removed them. They actually work out pretty well for me. You know, I can hang clamps from them and they're out of the way. So, and they're easy to see and, and easy to grab. And I think that's probably the most important thing with clamp wall is making sure that you can get to it quickly. If you're in the middle of a glue up and you need one of these guys, you know, coming over, grabbing it off the wall and moving to your workpiece and actually getting it locked in is, is the most important thing. Let's see, I've got some templates up here. Um, I've got some battery charging stations. Um, nothing too fancy on that. I've got a nice first aid kit because that's super important to have in the shop. I keep a first aid kit stocked with most of the you know, stop bleed and that type of thing. Plus I have this little tin box one with a bunch of band-aids and neosporin and that kind of thing. Um, then I've got a couple of gauges for 
checking studs or checking moisture in my lumber, label maker, because we got to keep things organized, and another little battery charger. And actually, that guy needs to come off the battery. Another thing on this wall is my lumber storage rack. I don't usually keep more lumber in the shop than I actually need. Um, if I'm working on a project, I tend to buy the lumber about a week or two ahead of time and let it acclimate to the shop, either standing vertically on the wall over here, or you know, if I need to, I'll put it up here. But I've got some cherry slabs and some walnut slabs that are ready for use, but I just got to find the right project for. I will say I really like this lumber rack. It's pretty inexpensive and it gets things up and off the floor. So it doesn't take up a ton of my space because I'm not gonna really use that wall space for anything else. Those guys are really handy if you need to get stuff off the ground and onto the walls. Since I have 10 foot ceilings in this shop, putting things up and on the walls is definitely a plus for me. As you can see over here, where I've moved some of my son's toys and things up off the floor that just didn't fit in the house, we can put them up towards the ceiling. Next up is the AC unit. Uh, I have a little portable unit here. It cools off the shop. I am in Virginia Beach, so it gets very warm in the shop here in the summer. The humidity is through the roof. So luckily this has dehumidifier setting as well as an AC setting. It works really well to cool off the shop for the most part. The doors on the shop are insulated, so I don't have to worry about adding any insulation to it. The shop doesn't get too cold in the winter. It's actually winter right now. If you guys are watching this, it's like January. So, you know, it's perfectly comfortable. It's like 70 degrees in here. I actually usually keep it cooler because I don't like getting super sweaty in the shop with all the lights on and everything. So this works out great. I got a ladder because it's a shop, it needs a ladder. We'll come over here to some of my more random storage. I keep all of my glues on this little spot. It makes them easy to grab. I guess that's probably the most important thing. I've got a little paper towel holder, which ended up in the trash on the short, but I pulled it back out because it works in the shop. And then I have some clamping squares, masks, pads, sanding stuff, that kind of thing. I do keep my sander nice and close to eye level because I see things in projects and I can go and quickly grab the sander and then, you know, address them. I think that's probably one of the, like the newer changes I've made in the shop. This used to be down and under the bench. And whenever I saw an issue, I was like, man, I gotta get the sander and it became a thing. But since I've had it here, it's been pretty quick to go and grab and you know, fix those problems before they become bigger issues. Moving on, I've got a bunch of sandpaper blocks as well as uh, card scrapers, that type of thing. This is kind of like my finishing station. It's definitely not the sexiest solution, but again, it works for me. I keep a bunch of tapes up here because you guys know I love my blue tape. I do have some green tape here, which I use every once in a while when I'm trying to label things. Then I got drill bits. I've got some brayers and things I use for spreading glue, nails or screws, excuse me, ear protection, eye protection. And then, you know, we get back into more drill bits and that type of thing. Anything I keep in here is just kind of like an assortment of goods, any tools that I don't have a spot for in the shop that I, I need to grab quickly, just go on my little grab bag. I've got my Festool router over here. I can't tell you how much this thing has been an awesome upgrade in the shop. I've gone through a couple of different plunge routers. None of them have worked nearly as well as this one, you know, as we just saw on the Japanese bench that I made. This thing is like powered through those dados like nobody's business. And honestly, I didn't have to worry about the stop moving, everything stayed in one spot, so that was fantastic. With this router, it's one of those buy once, cry once situations. I wish I had done it a lot sooner. Again, you know, we live and we learn. From here, I've got a little bit of extra plywood. I use these for like clamps and hold downs, that type of thing, any setup. Then I've got some stuff for the air compressor, which is the nail gun and a little sharpening station that I use for sharpening plane blades, any of my chisels. Down below, I have all wood storage. That's just where I keep some of the off cuts that I don't feel like I want to throw away yet. And that kind of goes for the top. Uh, a lot of this is just scrap stuff that are great for like small projects. And then I've got some plywood. That's about it for this little rack. Honestly, it's probably a better solution in like cabinets and stuff like that. But I like the fact that it's out because I can just grab it. And I actually know what I have. So I have mixed feelings about it. All right, so we're gonna skip over the tool wall here for a minute and come over to the bandsaw. This is a 17 inch bandsaw by Grizzly. It is their anniversary model. So I do have it on a rolling stand. So if I have larger pieces that I need to cut or resaw, I can do so pretty easily. It rolls really nice and easily in the shop. I have an attached light to it so that I can actually see what I'm working on. I think that's probably one of the first things that I would say if you have one of these band saws to invest in, it's just like a little $25 light because being able to see what you're cutting is obviously super important and 
that makes it a lot easier. I have upgraded the fence on this bandsaw. This fence is the taller fence by Grizzly. It's a little add-on. Definitely makes it a lot nicer for me when I'm resawing pieces that have the extra surface area to reference against. I usually keep a resaw blade on the bandsaw unless I'm cutting a ton of curves, in which case I swap it out for something that's you know higher TPI. This bandsaw blade is the wood slicer and it works awesome for resaw, so I keep it on there. Over here, I've got a bunch of sticks that I use for edge banding I just keep around, or if I need small pieces or thin pieces, you know, I can come to the corner and grab it instead of having to resaw a bunch of other pieces to get what I need. Over here is where I keep a lot of the lumber that I use most often, stuff like my walnut, my maple, my white oak, things that I've been using more often on projects. Plus I'll cut some like smaller sheet goods so leaned against my nice fridge here, which will be going away hopefully in the next couple weeks to like, make a little bit more room in the shop because over the past two months, I've definitely added more items to the shop. I've also I got my nice flat screen TV, which I literally have only used one time and it was the day that I put it in here. And the only reason it's in here is because our TV in the living room died and this is that TV that died. Got a big old band on it and it's not really fun or worth watching. Hopefully this will be updated and be out of here soon. And then over here, I've got my finishing cabinet. This is where I keep all my finishes as well as epoxies or anything that's flammable. By the way, speaking of flammable, let me know in the comments if you notice how many fire extinguishers I have in the shop because those are super important. Safety first, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so I've got any extra glues or any wood fillers on this shelf. I've got a lot of my wood finishes over here. I use a ton of different finishes in the shop. Lately, I've been really into using penetrating oils or hard wax oils. I've got some extra sandpaper over here, you know, glue gun. I don't keep a ton of finishes on hand because I use what I need and I get rid of the stuff I don't. So I think that that's probably the best advice that I could give to you in your workshop is if you're not using it, get rid of it. It's just taking up space otherwise. So the X-Carve, I just recently got this. I just did a video on building this table a couple months ago. It's been an awesome addition to the shop. I've used it to help quicken my process for making templates, as well as doing some experiments with what I can do to build other projects that are more modular. So we'll definitely be using this more often in the shop, but more on that to come. So next I have the first tool wall. This is where I keep my miter gauge as well as my dado stack and any large squares I need. I've also got some hand planes, that type of thing over here. I really like this miter gauge from Incra. It works awesome for getting those details in there, really like fine miters that you see on some of my projects. You can really dial them in with this thing. I've got some woodpecker squares as well as the woodpecker square for the track saw over here. They're in an easy enough spot to grab, but out of the way. And I think that makes them more convenient. Over here under the table, I've got some storage for pieces that I am planning to use for the CNC, as well as just getting things up and out of the way because it's a horizontal surface in the wood shop and therefore it just needs stuff. Lastly, I have my large crosscut sled. This is again, one that we built recently on the channel. I keep this super close by because it is my go-to sled now. And um, I find it super convenient right behind the table saw and you know, it's out of the way over here. So I have this little box fan dust solution for capturing anything that's in the air. I usually run that when I'm sanding, making a lot of fine particles in the air. It's really quiet, works really well. Definitely one of those other things that I hope to upgrade in the coming year, but you know, we all got to start somewhere. Over here, I have the tool wall. This is just a small little tool wall, but it's packed full of tools that I use all the time. Obviously a ton of my woodpeckers measuring tools. I've already gone over a video for woodpeckers tools. I'll probably be doing another one of those shortly, but definitely using my TS-12 all the time. Uh, I definitely use all these Polini pocket rules all the time and any small rules you see are, you know, my go-tos. Uh, I definitely gravitate towards the uh, woodpeckers tools, obviously, but I do have some squares and small pieces uh, uh, that I use down here for laying out dominoes, laying out joinery. Nothing really beats a good solid square. I've also got some pull saws, chisels, and a mallet. One of my earlier projects that I keep on the wall because you know, I like to remember where I started. If you wanna see more details about what tools I'm using in the shop, you should check out my Instagram. I post about my tools every Tuesday or just about every Tuesday. So check it out to uh, stay up to date. And see, I've got this small table that I use for holding most of my stuff. I, I take it, I pull it out when I need to have a larger surface area for the bandsaw. I do have some dogs in here that I've actually never used. Maybe one day, we'll see. Um, I also have a scrap bin pile down here, which is pretty full. So need to go in there and actually 
put some of that in the burn pile probably. And actually that brings up a good opportunity to talk about the shop lights. I do have three different zones for LED lights in the shop. I can turn them on with the remote. These LED lights I got off Amazon, they're in a pack. I think they are like 40 bucks for six, something like that. And they work really great. They don't flicker at all. I haven't had any real issues with them. I should say the only real issue I've had is that the garage door does not work very well anymore. It interferes with the signal. If you don't have a problem with that, then these lights are fantastic. Let's move on to the bench. I've gone over this in the past video. Uh, this is my top drawer set up with Kaizen foam and it keeps all of my tools nice and organized. Um, I have had to make some modifications and actually the foam is pretty forgiving for making modifications. You just stuff some other foam in there and it's stuck. It works out all right for me. In here, I keep drills, extra blades for the table saw, that sort of thing. Pocket holes, jigs, uh, is close by a table saw or quick for assembly for me. Down here, I've got some saws, circular saw, jigsaw, palm routers, that sort of thing. The bench is 48 inches by 96 inches. It's an MDF top bench. Perfect for me. Works as my outfeed table, my assembly table, my bench, all of those things. Sometime in the future, I'll be able to upgrade to having a split top Rubo or something like that in the shop with an outfeed table and assembly table but for right now I'd rather do projects than just to work on a bench so it works out for me. I do have a nice vise attached to the bench uh, which we did an upgrade on in a recent video. I keep the oscillating spindle sander under here just keep it out of the way. I pull it out and put it on that little workmate that you saw earlier with a couple of bolts and it, whenever I really need to use it, or I can throw it onto the bench. I don't use it enough to keep it out. So um, moving over here, my miter saw, it's tucked into the bench. It is a Matabo. I usually only use this to break down lumber. I don't use it to cut miters. So uh, it works out pretty well for me. Show you guys how it flips up here. I use some of these pens and then flip out the hooks here. And then the whole thing pivots on a bar and locks in place. And when it's locked in place, the top of the bench sits flush with the top of the saw. So everything is nice and square. And you know, it's pretty quick and easy to get out and put away. For as often as I use it, it's not a hassle. I didn't invent this design. I honestly don't know if I would keep a miter saw in my shop because I don't use it enough. I think when the time comes to upgrade the bench, I'll probably be getting rid of the miter saw or I will build a miter saw station somewhere in the shop. We'll see how that goes though. Um, my router table is built into the bench. I just use a quarter inch sheet of plexiglass to mount the router to the MDF top. It's inset by a quarter inch as well. I haven't had any issues with it pulling out or moving or rotating or anything like that. Um, I think that was a, my, one of my major concerns with this solution, but I haven't had any issues. I have the Triton TR8001, I think, in the table. I can raise and lower it using this thing. Um, it's a three horsepower model, so it's plenty strong for any of those large router bits that you see me using. From there, um, I have my router bit storage. Which I did a video on where I you know, upgraded and moved these router bits over to these small channels. They work really great for being able to find my router bits. I can you know, take them out, do what I need, and pop them right back into their shelf. I also have my track saw down here. It just tucked away. Uh, I don't really love all of the sustainers, but when I don't have a lot of cabinets in the shop, they work well to hold those tools. The only other thing that I wanna show on the bench, this cutout here for being able to clamp onto, uh, which is super helpful. I, I use it all the time for clamping work pieces down. It's a really nice space to be able to grab onto the side of the bench and have some, some meat to it. There's a two by four right under here that sits nice and flush with the edge. So it gives me something to grab onto and you know I don't have to worry about my bark pieces falling off. The last big addition that I have in the shop is these mats. The mats have been a godsend for my feet. So I don't know about you guys, but working in the shop on concrete floors does a number on my back as well as my heels. These have been awesome. I just recently got them for a Black Friday sale, I believe from like Woodcraft. I would highly recommend them, especially if you're doing long hours standing if you're doing long hours working in the shop you know having nice mats for your feet super important honestly i would have grabbed another one if i'd known how big of a game changer they would be so that's about it that's really the workshop as it stands today in 2022 i think that you know again we have a ton of upgrades that i can do over the next year or many years you know however long it takes but i'm fairly happy with where the shop is today it's laid out in a way that makes sense for me it's got the best workflow that i can come up with today i think that again getting rid of the refrigerator being able to open up the space a little bit more i definitely have some 
extra things like the other AC unit you saw in the corner that I can get rid of. You know, small things like that. The biggest takeaway that I have from any of these, you know, shop tours or shop update videos is that there's always room for growth and we can always be changing and upgrading and evolving our workshops in the best way that suits our needs. I hope that this video has inspired you guys to want to build some new things, to try some new things in your shop, to uh, maybe upgrade. Or if you have any questions on any of the upgrades I've done, please leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. That wraps things up. So if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Watch this video next and I'll see you next time. I don't have a huge sticker collection, but if you want to send me some stickers, let me know, shoot me an email. I'd love some more stickers. And the correct answer for fire extinguishers is two. I don't really know what else to talk about. I don't really have anything else.